So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tin all the pads, all the uh, the main PDB and the ESC pads, and the ground and the signal wire. I'm just going to go through and tin them all. I'm not going to tin these pads over here because I'm still not 100% sure which ones I'm going to be using. But uh, I'll go ahead and just tin those. My iron is a little cold. I've got it at 750. Let's take it up to 800. This the iron. The, the solder isn't really flowing on the pad as if the whole pad was getting hot. It's kind of yeah, that's better. The solder is kind of see how it didn't cover the corner here. It just sort of it didn't flow to the edges and wet to the edges like it should if the iron is properly hot. And you'll notice I didn't do the uh, the signal and the signal ground pads, and the reason for that is they're small enough that I can't I don't really feel I can confidently do them uh, from this side of the camera. So I'm going to move the camera out of the way and just lean in and squint at them and get them. And I'm going to bring these wires in here and just figure out how I'm going to route them. Ground is going to go to here on the left, and. Uh, power is going to go to here on the right. Okay, no problem. I'm tempted to go ahead and put the uh, the M3 nut on here so I don't get that in the way of where it's going to go, but then I might melt it with the soldering iron, and I don't want to do that, so I won't. Boy, this is tight. This is a tight freaking, this is no fool in soldering right here. There's not a lot of room to get in there. And do what you need to do. I almost think I ought to. I almost think I ought to solder the signal wire first, because it's smaller, and the tip of the soldering iron needs to get in there. Man, this this flight controller is not for the faint of heart. I tell you what. I think it's going to be pretty hard for me to solder this small connection without really getting getting in close to see what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I can't I can't show it to you. I'm sorry. And through the magic of the loop, you can see how I did. I'm not the best in the world, but it's okay. I feel like it's okay. Now I will go ahead and I will use the, use the big solder for this one. Where did the big solder go? Nope, oh, there you are. I feel like the iron needs to be at 800 for this job because these ground connections have they can sink a whole lot of heat so you really gotta get the heat in there this is Joshua from the future here to point out to you that I'm making the exact mistake that I warned myself about which is I'm putting this ground wire too close to the screw and when I try to put the nut on it won't be able to go on because the wires in the way so it's a trade-off you make if you do it with the standoffs of the nuts off you, you can accidentally put the wire too close but if you do it with the standoffs of the nuts on you can accidentally melt them so I just want you to see what I'm doing here and don't make that mistake when you do a similar build give yourself plenty of clearance or maybe even put a set of sacrificial standoffs or nuts on and if you melt them well then you just take them off and you put a fresh one on Now I just did that mostly by feel, so let's take a look and see how I did. So you see how it's not quite sitting 
on the pad. It's kind of raised up off the pad. I don't like, that's not good. We need really good contact between the wire and the pad. So I'm going to just press that down with a screwdriver and re reheat it and get it to flow again. And hopefully it will, it will be happier the next time. much better if I didn't accidentally like short something but that was that's much better so this time you can see that it is uh, it's the solder has sort of flowed and it's sitting down on the pad better I feel better about that I don't like that little strand sticking off to the left wouldn't want that to accidentally ground something out just even a little bit that I feel like is acceptable though I'll, I will let that pass I, I feel like with soldering you have to kind of find the right balance. If you keep going back a million times to make it perfect, you'll overheat it and damage it, and then you'll destroy your board. So that that passes muster for me. You soldering experts out there are crying and shaking your head, but there you go. That, that's going to pass muster for me. And I'm trying to leave myself a little slack in the wires and while, while still keeping it neat. And once you cut that wire away, you ain't getting it back, so... Well, I felt it flow. Let's have a close look at it and see how it came out. And, uh, I'm going to push it down and, and flow it one more time. I don't like that the solder is not... See how the wire is sticking up above the solder? You can still see the individual strands of wire. I don't feel like that's good. That's not how it should be. That probably, that joint will be fine forever. But I'm going to hit it one more time. And I'm going to move the camera out of the way so I can get a good look at it. If we take another look at it, you should see that on this side, at least, there is a good fillet of material. A good flow and, and wetting. And the wire is off the side a little bit. And, and it would be ideal if it were centered on the pad and had that sort of fillet on both sides. Let me see if I can show it to you a little better. But I think we've hit the point where I'm not going to go back and try and fix it a million times and then end up destroying it. Uh, yeah, that's what I think. I think that's gonna pass muster for me. And now I'm gonna do the rest of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and do them without recording it because they're all just gonna be just like that. Okay, folks, so it's done. Um, and now I'm just gonna do a, a, an inspection because if you screw this up, you're gonna smoke something and it's not good. The first inspection I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for consistency uh, you can see that the ground wire is always on the outside. And I'll cross-check this against the manual on the Furious FPV site, but if any of these were inconsistent, then it probably would indicate something was wrong. The, uh, the red wire is always on the inside. The signal wire is always on the same side as the red wire. And the ground wires are always together. The next thing I'll do is I'll do a physical inspection with uh, just... I won't always use the loop, but I'll go in there and I will check to see that nothing is bridged or touching. And I'll just do a visible look for look for any solder bridges or anything like that that might be causing a problem. I'll also do this check with a multimeter. And this I don't do this for every build, but this is so tight. It's so tight in there it would be so easy to make a mistake and screw something up. Yeah, so um, so be real careful. Uh, anyway, that's that's that. Uh, you'll notice I also soldered on the power leads. I didn't. You'll forgive me for not showing you that. It's not too radical. Joshua from the future here to point out one other thing before we move on. Do you see how on the bottom two ESCs, on the bottom left the ground wire is pretty short, and on the bottom right the positive wire is pretty short. Whereas on the top both of those wires have a little S bend in them right? And I've got more slack. 
the top way is the right way to do it and the best way to do it. Uh, later on, I wanted to raise this flight controller up a little higher and actually put it on the top of the stack instead of the bottom. And don't worry about why I wanted to do that. We'll get there. And the shortness of those two bottom wires prevented me from doing that. So I felt like I gave myself enough slack, but I didn't have as much slack as I ended up needing. And you can always shorten a wire if you really need to, but you can't make it longer. So leave yourself a little extra slack. Those two top ones aren't any messier. You know, they still look fine and uh, they got a lot more room to work with than the ones on bottom. I got to say, the, the combini is not for a first timer or anyone who is not really confident in their soldering skills. Uh, I am fairly confident in my soldering skills, and yet, uh, especially working by the camera, it had me sort of sweating a little bit. I feel like it's come out okay, but yeah. And if you also are not confident in your solder skills, and you have to go back and you have to rework and rework and rework, you're going to lift a pad on this board and this whatever, I think it's around 50 bucks, this this expensive board is going to be toast. So I I still am really not sold 100% on the idea of a PDB and a flight controller in one. A, a PDB with nice, I don't know, what, 4-ounce copper or whatever, nice heavy copper, thick traces, right? That's going to stand up to a lot of rework if you need to do it. And if you do smoke it, it's only a $10 part. Whereas this, it's re this is so neat, right? It's so tidy how it's going to all come together. But... It does not leave you a lot of room for error, and the price of a mistake is high. So, yeah, there you go. Anyway, uh, so I'll pick up tomorrow uh, with the next steps, uh, but I'm going to finish up for tonight, and I'm going to go get, get some sleep. Bye-bye.